In this video, I'm going to create a word scramble game in C, where we're going to scramble a word, and then we're going to ask the user to guess that word. The highlight of this program is going to be a scramble function that actually scrambles the word. And the scramble function that I'm going to create is a little bit more sophisticated than a lot of other examples I've seen online. And that's because it's going to actually take some extra effort to ensure that the word has been sufficiently scrambled. So I'm going to include a bunch of libraries to help with this program. I'm going to include the string.h library so I can compare strings and find the length of strings. I'm going to include stdlib.h as well as time.h because I'm going to use some randomization to help scramble the word. I'll also include the ctype.h library so I can set all the characters of the word to be scrambled to lowercase. So they can be moved around without really worrying about the capitalization of certain characters. And then I'll include stdbool.h so I can make a Boolean variable as well. So the function to actually scramble words is gonna look like this. We'll say void scramble car star s. So the function is gonna accept a string as an argument and it's gonna scramble the letters in that string. So we'll provide a definition of the function down here and the first thing we're going to do in this function is find the length of the string. We'll say int length is equal to strlens. And then we're going to set all of the characters in the string to lowercase. So we'll say here for int i is equal to zero, i is less than length, i plus plus. And we'll set si equal to two lower s at i. So what this is doing is using i to go from zero up until the length of the string. And for every character in the string, we're calling two lower and giving that character as an argument. Two lower will take that character and make sure that it is a lowercase letter if it was previously an uppercase letter. So any uppercase letters are gonna be set to be lowercase letters. If it was already lowercase, it'll just remain lowercase. And we're gonna set si to the result of calling two lower so that's going to make all the characters in the string lowercase. And that's just so we can move them around at will without having to worry about capitalization. Now there's a couple special cases that we're going to take care of separately. So if this string is only one character long, we really can't scramble that. So we're going to do nothing in that case. We'll say if length is equal to one, just return. Because we can't do anything in that case. We're going to return no actual value because this is a void function but this will terminate the execution of the function. The other special case is if there's only two characters in the string. So if there's only two characters in the string, the only thing we can really do is swap them. That's it. So we'll just say if length is equal to two, just swap those two characters. We'll say car temp is equal to S0. S0 is gonna be equal to S1, and S1 is gonna be equal to temp. So we do the classic swap of two things using a temporary variable, because that's all we can do in this case of having two characters. So we'll just say return, and again, we'll terminate the function here, if that's the case. Now, if the string is longer than two characters, we're gonna do some more sophisticated scrambling of the string. In that case, we're gonna actually keep a copy of the original version of the string. So I'll say here, car original, length plus one. And we're going to make a character array that's big enough to hold a copy of the original string. And then I'll say str cpy and then original s to copy the string into original. So that way original can be this sort of unmodified copy of the string that we can compare our scrambled version of the string to in order to see if the string has been scrambled enough. So next we'll have a big do while loop. And this do while loop is gonna have the role of determining whether the string has been scrambled enough. Then we're gonna have an inner loop. And the inner loop is gonna have the job of actually scrambling the string. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna perform swaps where we're gonna randomly find two positions in the string and we're gonna swap the characters at those positions. Now we're going to do this for as many times as there are characters in the string itself. So I'll say here, int i is equal to zero. 
Then I'll say while i is less than length, and we'll find two random positions in the string. So I'll say here int pause one is equal to rand modulus length. So the rand function comes from the stdlib.h library. It's going to return an integer between zero and some very, very large number. When we do modulus length, this is going to result in a number that's between zero and length minus one. And that's perfect because the characters of our string have the range of zero to length minus one. So it's going to find an index in the string that's in range at random. And we'll do the same thing again. We'll say int position two is equal to rand modulus length. So we're going to have two random positions now in the string. And to scramble the string, we're going to swap the characters at those positions. Now, because I'm using the rand function, one thing that's very important is that I seed the random number generator. So in the main function, I'm going to do that. I'll say srand and then time null. srand is going to seed the random number generator with a value. And we want that value to be different every single time our program runs to ensure the random numbers our program generates are different every single time it runs. So what we're going to seed it with is the current time. When we call the function time with null as an argument, it returns the current time. And the current time is going to be different by definition every time we run our program. So we're going to be using a different seed every time. So now that we've got the two random positions in our string, the first thing we're going to do is actually ensure they're different because there's no point in swapping a character with itself. If position one and position two are the same, it makes no sense to actually do a swap. So we'll say here, if position one doesn't equal position two, we'll do the swap. And we'll do the same sort of swap as before. We'll say car temp is equal to S at position one. S at position one is equal to S at position two. And then we'll say S at position two is equal to temp. And only if we did generate two different random positions, are we going to increment I. So this will make sure that the loop will just run again in the case that we actually did find two positions at random that were the same position. So after we do this, the string should be pretty scrambled. And a lot of examples you'll find online of scrambling words will just do something like this. And honestly, for the most part, this is fine. But it's technically possible that we could actually return the original string if we did this. It's also possible that maybe the string just isn't very well scrambled. So maybe it looks too much like the original string. So what I'm going to build into my function is some checks to make sure that the string is sufficiently scrambled. I'm going to create some variables to help with these checks. I'll say double diff is equal to zero. And that's going to be a measure of how different the string is. I'll also say bool same start is equal to false and same end is equal to false. And these variables are going to keep track of whether the string that's been scrambled has the same starting character or the same ending character as the original string. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually compute how many characters are different in terms of at each position when compared to the original string. So we'll say here int differences is equal to zero. And then I'm going to write a loop that's going to examine each position in both strings, the original string and the scrambled string. And we're going to count the number of differences. So we'll say here for int j is equal to zero, j is less than, less than length, j plus plus. And we'll say here if original at j doesn't equal s at j, then there's a difference. And we'll say differences plus plus. So at this point, we'll have counted how many differences there are from the original string 
and the scrambled string. Then we're going to divide this number of differences by the total number of characters in the string. So we'll say here diff is equal to double differences divided by length. We're converting to double here because these are both integers. Difference is an integer, length is an integer. If I want to get back a number like 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.8, I need to use double here to make sure that this isn't just a regular integer division. But if I have a string that's, you know, length 10 and five characters are different in the scrambled string compared to the original string, then we would have five divided by 10 and we get 0 0.5, which would signify that half the characters are different when compared to the original string. And we probably want at least that to say that the string has been sufficiently scrambled. So this is one measure now of how different the strings are. The other thing we're gonna check is whether the string that's been scrambled has the same starting or same ending character as the original string. So if we have some string like this, let's say it's called friends and we scramble it. So we'll say friends is going to become something like this. We'll say N is gonna switch with I, D is gonna switch with E, and maybe N is gonna flip with R. So if we look at this string here, this is gonna be fairly easy to guess that the word is friends. And that's because the first character of the string and the last character of the string are the same as the actual word. It's actually a bit of a thing in human cognition that we're actually fairly good at identifying a scrambled word so long as the first character of the word and the last character of the word are the same as the real word. So we want to avoid this because it's gonna make it too easy to guess the scrambled word. So we're gonna do a check to see if the scrambled string has the same starting character and the same ending character as the original string. So we'll say here, same start is equal to S0 is equal to original zero. So this is gonna return true if the scrambled string has the same first character as the original string. And so we're gonna store true or false into same start. We'll do the same thing for same end. We'll say same end is equal to s at length minus one is equal to original at length minus one. So compare the last character in the scrambled string to the last character in the original string and see if those are the same. Now we've got this big do while loop. And what we're going to do is we're going to run through this process again of scrambling the string. If our scrambled version of the string is not sufficiently scrambled. So we're going to say, try to scramble the string again if same start and same end are true. So if the string has the same start and the same end in terms of the character, we're going to scramble the string again because we're going to say that's not scrambled enough. If this is the case that they have the same starting character and the same ending character, that's too easy. And we're going to do it again. We're also going to do it again if the diff value is less than 0 0.5. So remember, this diff value is basically keeping track of the percentage or fraction of characters in the string that are actually different compared to the original string. So it would be 0 0.5, say, if half the characters are different compared to the original string. If less than half of the characters are out of place, we're going to say it's not scrambled enough. Now we're going to have one more check with this function here. And we're going to make sure that we don't get caught in some kind of infinite loop here, because these are some pretty harsh conditions here where we're checking for a couple of things to make sure the string is really going to be scrambled. Now the English language includes all kinds of words. Maybe there's some word out there where these conditions are just not possible to meet. Maybe so many of the characters are the same. Maybe groups of characters are the same. Maybe the string is too short. I'm not sure. But just to account for the fact that it's possible 
that maybe this do while loop never really ends because these conditions are never really met, we're going to have one fail safe. So I'm going to make an int value here. I'll say int times stuck is equal to zero. And every time through the loop, I'm going to increment time stuck. And I'm going to implement this to have a upper bound on how many times this do while loop can run. So we'll say here, while this is true, continue, and while times stuck is less than 100. And we're going to have this check here so that if this do while loop ever runs 100 times or more, we're done. Because for some reason, we're going to assume we just can't scramble it as much as we'd like to. And this is just to account for quirky words in the English language that perhaps just can't be scrambled as much as we'd like. So now we've got this fairly large, sophisticated scramble function built. Let's actually build a bit of a game out of it. So let's make a word up here. We'll say car original 100 is equal to all right. And that'll be the word that we scramble. I'll make a character array to hold the scrambled version of that word. And I'll make a character array to store the user's answer. Then I'm going to copy into the scrambled array the original word. So now we've got two copies of the word here. Then we'll call the scramble function to scramble the word. So we'll say scramble, scrambled. And we're going to scramble the version of the word that's in the scrambled array. Then we can actually present the game to the user. So we'll say bool game over is equal to false. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a do while loop where we're going to continually present the game to the user until they get the right answer, until they guess it right. So we'll say printf unscramble the word percent s slash n slash n scrambled. So we'll give them the scrambled version of the word and we're asking them to unscramble it. Then we'll say printf answer and scanf percent s answer. So we're going to ask the user for the answer and we're going to accept their answer and store it into answer. Then we'll check to see if they got it right. So we'll say if string comparison of their answer and the original string is equal to zero, they got it right. So the string comparison function, strcmp, it accepts two strings as an argument. And if they're the same string, it returns zero. So this is basically a check to see if these two strings are equal. And if that's the case, we can then end the game. So we'll say printf, and we'll say, you got it, slash n slash n. And then we can set game over to true, because it's done. They won. Otherwise, we'll printf try again. So otherwise, we'll say printf try again. And we'll do this so long as it's not game over. So this is quite a bit of code that I've written without actually compiling it. So I'm quite nervous to see if it actually compiles correctly. Let's see. So I'll try to compile it and run it here and see what we get. Okay, and uh, amazingly enough, it's actually compiled without any errors. And we get this here. Unscramble the word, and we got H-L-A-G-R-T-I. So that looks pretty scrambled to me. If I type in something that's like a bad answer, we'll get try again. If I say all right, it'll say you've got it. And so it seems to be working. We could try it again with one more word here. I could say something like friends here, save it, run it. And it says unscramble the word. And you can see that's pretty scrambled. If we say something like friends and we spell it wrong, maybe we're going to get try again. If I type in friends, we get it right. And so this is a word scramble game created in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.